Brian, can you lead us to the pledge, please? Sure can. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, would you lead us in prayer? Of course. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of this day. Lord, there are many that are in need, and you know those needs. We ask that you give them grace and mercy and tend to them as you see fit. Lord, we ask for wisdom, knowledge, guidance during this meeting and as we conduct the business of the county this week. Lord, we ask all of these things in my heavenly precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you both. Amen. Thank you. Control yourself, sir. Sir, can you please be quiet in the audience? We're kidding. You can have a development director. A little banter, a little banter going on. Yes. He's excited over here, I can tell. Well, he should be. Yeah, he a lot going be. on. That's right. Um, welcome to our meeting, June 23rd. Uh, let's get started with the approval of the June 16th meeting minutes. I know you've had a chance to review. Can I get a motion? Uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes of June 16th as submitted by our clerk. I second. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of request for appropriation of funds. Uh, any comments or questions on the appropriations? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I will second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of notification from the Ohio Department of Taxation regarding permissive sales tax. Um, this is the permissive sales tax for April of uh, this year. Uh, it was a decrease, first decrease we've seen in a very long time of $112,000 for $112,477. So we'll, hopefully that trend does not continue. It shouldn't. We still have a very strong economy uh, locally. Um, so we'll see kind of what's driving that, but um, in the meantime, can I get a motion? Or if there's any comments or questions. Motion is okay. A second. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of Department of Youth Services grant budget amendment regarding juvenile court. Um, this, there was a change in staffing, correct? <clears throat> yes. There's a change in staffing. They always send these um, amendments through when that happens. Um, really nothing changed much with the grant other than that. Have they decreased a person? Decreased. Decreased, yeah. Any comments or questions? Hearing none. Motion approved. Second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of environmental review record operation fund, Oops, 2022, I think that's supposed to be, for Portsmouth Metropolitan Housing Authority, PMHA, regarding grant number OH12 PO10501-22. Uh, was there any questions on the environmental review? As uh, these two big binders here that you've had a chance to look through. Any questions? Hearing none. Motion approved. Second. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. And Mr. Powell. Hi. In the matter of request for appropriation of funds. Uh, any comments or questions? Appropriation transfer of funds, sorry. Oh, transfers. <laughs> Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of request for fund transfers. Any comments or questions on our fund transfers? Hearing none. Motion approved. I'll second. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of approving payment of the regular schedule of accounts for the various funds, moral obligations, and then now certificates, totaling amount of $170,194.39. Any questions on the docket? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of accepting amended certificate for the Budget Commission? 
Any comments or questions on the amended certificate? Hearing none. Motion to accept. A second. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of authorizing the clerk to advertise a public hearing notice for the 2023 tax budget. Any comments or questions regarding the uh, to, to public hearing notice to advertise for? Hearing none. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. <clears throat> in the matter of resolution establishing a fund for chip bc1 for the soda county commissioner's office um, this resolution is regarding our chip program um, chip money comes in and at this point it's all been going into the same essentially the same fund the same bucket um, however there are three different programs that operate out of that fund um, by separating it into three different funds it'll be easier to track for our clerks in the auditor's office, this is more of a housekeeping issue, and it's actually a requirement by the state, if, if I'm not mistaken. It's just something we uh, realize and have to fix. Um, the next two resolutions are regarding that issue. Any comments or questions? Hearing none. I'll make a motion to adopt. I'll second. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of resolution establishing a fund for CHIP BC2 for the Soda County Commissioner's Office. Um, as I said before, it's just adding a new fund to kind of clean up the accounting of the CHIP program. Any comments or questions? Hearing none. I'll make a motion to adopt. I'll second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. In the matter of bid award for the courthouse masonry repair. Uh, we had the, the bid of the uh, <clears throat> masonry repair project for the courthouse. Um, this is specifically the outside of the courthouse. There's, there's chipping, there's pieces falling off around the top of the building. Um, we're seeing more of those end up on the ground. It, it's a safety issue, uh, quite honestly, a major safety issue, but then also restoring and maintaining um, the assets that we're responsible for. Um, this bid award is in the amount of $291,212 to advance the building restorations. It's a very specific type of work. They are um, out of South Point, Ohio. They are the closest um, contractor that actually bid on this project. The other one was out of Chicago. And I think actually the bid walkthrough there was somebody out of Tennessee, if I recall correctly. So. It's good to see that we have some South Point um, relatively local regional tech company that's able to help us with this. Any additional comments or questions? Hearing none. Motion to approve. A second. Mr. Davis. Aye. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. In the matter of change order for the Soda County Engineer for 2021 improvements to Greater Portsmouth Regional Airport Runway 18 through 36 pavement. Rehabilitation FAA project number 339-0069-022-2021. Um, we've been having the paving project happen out at the, the airport, paving the runways, doing quite a bit of different paving around the site. Um, this is a change order to finish and complete the paving uh, in front of the terminal and what we lovingly call the donut hole, which is the gravel area there. Yeah, pretty much. In the, green, uh, in the green area. In the yes. green area there, so um, we'll see an expansion of parking and, and much nicer, um, quite honestly, just making that facility nicer um, out there. Yeah. This change order, uh, the amount of the original contract was $1,713,029. The change order is in the amount of $98,290, taking the new contract price to uh, $1,811,320.22. Any comments or questions? Uh, I'd, I'd like to comment that uh, the airport should be opening if it hasn't already. I think, I, I think it was either yesterday or today mm -hmm. the airport was going to be opening for this weekend, which is really, really good news. Um, so, yes, 5,001 feet of runway have been totally repaid, uh, striped, uh, drainage systems installed, uh, Shelly. 
uh, was out there doing a lot of work uh, over the last 40 some days and, and did a great job, um, the contractor. And uh, now uh, they did apply for and received a ODOT grant to replace all the lighting at the airport, which is huge. The lighting is antiquated and old, and this is going to be updated lighting, so this is going to be great. Uh, and then to go along with that, and I, it was this past week that we celebrated two years since we redid the terminal uh, and remodeled the terminal after 60 years, mm -hmm. something like that, 67 years I think it was, that the terminal really never changed. And now that's been done, uh, very positive. Now the, now the parking lot is, is being paved. It wasn't done uh, night before last, but they were working on it. And just so everybody knows, I wanna let everybody know, we will not stripe and seal the remainder part. We will not stripe it, especially in the donut hole, um, until <coughs> 30 days. You gotta let the asphalt set for 30 days before you can do all the striping for it to really adhere. So um, so we'll be kind of um, like it has been forever, kind of wild, wild west out there as far as parking. Hopefully everybody will be respectful of each, each one. But 30 days before we finish the striping and they'll get on that and we'll be done with the project. It'll look very fresh. It already is looking so much more better, so much more open. And then, of course, we have the MEAS project that's going to be going on across the way in the, the other donut hole, <laughs> across the way, the much bigger one, um, uh, the Medford Emergency Ambulance Service project that will be going up across the street, right there at the entrance to SOAR. So good things are happening. Uh, airport's growing, um, and we're looking forward to getting all of our flyers back in now that the runway will be reopening. So uh, exciting stuff uh, happening at the airport. It's just part of the progress we're seeing in the county. Any additional it. comments or questions? Hearing none. Motion to approve. Second. Sorry. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. In the matter of bid award for Earl Thomas Conley Park Walking Trail. Um, if you've been out to ETC, you're driving by, you know, there's some news coverage. Um, we're working on the walking trail out at ETC Park, Earl Thomas Conley Park. Um, Brian Howard and his team have done an excellent job getting the uh, the gravel down, cutting cutting in the path um, to the top end of the park. It's one point. Is it one point two? One point two. One point two miles uh, loop at the top of the the park out there. Um, we did get a grant to help pave with that. Um, the bid award for um, this walking trail is in the amount of two hundred twenty eight thousand five hundred eighty dollars, and that's to WAI Construction Group. Um, the funding for this is coming from the Nature Works grant, uh, but then also the county receives um, stumpage uh, money. Um, this, these are for trees that have been cut down out in the forest. Um, you know, as it's coming out of a recreational asset, and I think we've said before at this table since I've been here, it makes sense to take that money and if we can, put it back into getting people outside and into recreation and fund those activities. Um, so the Nature Works grant and then stumpage funds will help uh, pay for this project. Um, you know, I know a lot of people take their kids out there. You know, I've had my kids out there. Right now, when you ride a bike out there, not on the pump track, you're still on the road. I mean, you're still in traffic. So this would be a nice uh, way to get out of traffic and kind of enjoy the park in a, in a different manner. Um, but I uh, just thank Brian, uh, Brian Howard, for all his hard work on this uh, project to this point. He's done a heck of a job out there and. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see this project completed. Any additional comments or questions? I'm going to be glad to see it done as well. Um, it is six foot wide. It will be for walking and biking or hiking or whatever you want to do. But uh, it is on the upper rim. Um, there is already a two mile loop that's more for mountain biking. Um, but this will be a paved walking uh, biking trail and we'll get uh, mileage markers as well on that walking trail for uh, local walkers and really if you've been out to etc park you'll see this packed um, on the weekends it's been amazing between the pump track splash pad all the shelter houses um, all of the improvements we've done to the park the um, you know with with repaving that we did last year um, sealing all the parking lots the park is looking amazing now we're working on the restroom facilities redoing the restroom facilities um, it's looking in good shape, and this is going to be an amazing addition to the park and uh, more opportunity for people to get out and do things. So, glad to see you. Happen. 
Any additional comments or questions? Hearing none, can I get a motion? I will make a motion we approve. I'll second. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of satisfaction of mortgage regarding the CHIP program, uh, this is a satisfaction of mortgage, mortgage bearing the dates of September 20th, 2013, given to the Natasha Doddridge and Jonathan Doddridge to secure the payment of $35,763 uh, as reported in the site of county records, have been satisfied and discharged. I'd just like to say congratulations to the Doddridge family. It's always nice when we see these come through. Um, this is the satisfaction of that mortgage. Any additional comments or questions? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll uh, second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. Uh, before we get to questions on or off the agenda, we have some friends that have joined us for a resolution presentation. At this point, I will turn it over to Commissioner Davis. Okay. All right. That was, that was easy. Good to see our friends from floor with us today. And uh, we have two resolutions. Now, I don't think I've ever done two in one setting. Um, we've, had, we've had a little difficulty getting together with schedules and everything else going on, but we actually have two resolutions, and both of them are equally important. I'm really glad to be able to do this. Um, so, and I understand we have a new site director and Greg Wilkins. Mr. Wilkins, sure. nice to meet you. And uh, we will do the resolution. I, it would be okay if we read this. Um, I'll read this from here. And then we'll do a picture of a photo off here in just a second, okay? But um, as, as many know, um, the, the site has been at uh, Piketon for 70, this is uh, the 70th year, I believe it is. 70 or 75? Which one is it? 70, okay. And um, it has been an instrumental part of our community. I mean, huge part of our community uh, for, for 70 years. And uh, we did a resolution, this is, it's been back a little bit since we did it. Uh, but I'll read this. It was moved by Ms. Coleman and seconded by Mr. Davis that the following resolution be adopted. Whereas Pike County, Ohio was chosen in 1952 to complement the federal government's gaseous diffusion program already well underway at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Paducah, Kentucky. And whereas the first enrichment diffusion cells went online in 1954, the facility was fully operational in March 1956, which is a miracle. If you think about the technological prowess and, and the ability of the construction workers, I believe there was over 25,000 at one time on site doing that. It's an amazing undertaking. The enriched uranium was required for both government and commercial uses, and whereas in the 60s the site took on a more commercial focus, enriching uranium mainly for nuclear power plants, and whereas the continuing work to enrich uranium for the nuclear navy ceased in 91 and 93, the production facilities were leased by DOE to the United States Enrichment Corporation, now Centris Energy Corporation, to re reconstruct restructure and transition the government's uranium enrichment operations from nuclear power plants to the private sector and whereas, a lot of whereas is here, the, uh, from 1991 until production ceased in 2001, the Portsmouth plant produced only low enriched uranium for commercial power plants in 93, uranium enrichment operations were turned over to USEC in accordance with the Energy Policy Act of 1992 and 2000, uranium enrichment production was terminated at the Portsmouth site some of the facilities were no longer required by USEC and subsequently returned to DOE. Uranium enrichment activities in Portsmouth concluded in May of 2001. And whereas for 10 years, DOE contracted with USEC to maintain the gas distribution plant in, in the safe configuration. Initially, process equipment was kept in cold standby, capable of restart if the need rose. Eventually, the plant transitioned to cold shutdown where systems were permanently disengaged and equipment was prepared. For eventual decommissioning in 2011, USEC returned the gas distribution plant facilities to DOE for decontaminating and decommissioning. This is a lot of history. Um, and whereas for 70 years, the Piketon gas distribution plant has been a proud part of our communities and provided economic development jobs for thousands over the years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Saudi County Commissioners congratulate uh, the gas distribution plant uh, in Piketon, Ohio, on celebrating 70 years on this 27th day of January in the year of our Lord, 2021, as is such action each member voted aye. This is specifically about the legacy of the plant. The next re resolution is actually in regards to what floor has done uh, since that time. And uh, it was moved by Mr. Davis and seconded by Ms. Coleman that the following resolution be adopted. 
And the resolution is this, whereas the contract between Floor BWXT and the Department of Energy for decontamination and decommissioning of the former nuclear site in Piketon is scheduled to cease in March of 2023. And they're working on that. And whereas Floor BWXT created an opportunity fund as part of their community commitment plan. This was huge. Uh, so funds can be used to support job creating projects to diversify the regional economy from dependence on the United States Department of Energy. And whereas Floor BWXT has awarded numerous opportunity fund grants to businesses in the four county region of Jackson, Pike, Ross, and Soda counties from 2013 to 2021 in excess of $2 million. And whereas Floor BWXT has assisted Soda County economic development in leveraging investment, both capital and machinery and equipment to the extent of $705,871. Now this, th that's an amazing number, but listen to these numbers. Allowing for 313 full-time jobs to be created and 670 full-time jobs to be retained in Scioto County. And those, ca those companies investing $62,990,045 into the community and local economy. And whereas Floor BWXT has been a regional economic development leader and corporate citizen with respect and competency and has exhibited outstanding community spirit by leading by example and now therefore be it resolved by virtue of the authority vested in us, we do hereby commend Floor BWXT for promoting industrial, economic, commercial, and civic activity or development for Scioto County, Ohio on this 26th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2022, to such action each member voted aye. Uh, gentlemen, lady, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, you, 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 and Robert, of course, has worked with uh, JEDISO, uh, which is the steering committee there that works with Tempo and uh, your, your staff to move those monies and, and, and to work and and all these projects, it's, it's a wonderful collaboration. If, if, if everybody only knew the work that this team does with Floor to collaborate, to, to pick the projects in a very fair manner. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible how it's done. And in a very impartial manner on that board. Um, everybody helps each other because we know we're in a regional economy. And uh, really, Floor, when Floor came to town, uh, I will have to say that before that, that necessarily wasn't the prescribed um, thought pattern uh, between the counties, that it was very, um, well, what happens in Adams, or Pike County happens in Pike County, and what happens in Jackson County, and it was more competitive than it was collaborative. And, and that's really changed, and, and um, the catalyst that was created by the Opportunity Fund through JEDISO changed that paradigm completely. And, and it works, it has worked. And uh, I wanna thank you personally for uh, what Floor has done. Uh, I look forward to Floor doing more, of course, through the Opportunity Fund. <laughs> and the Opportunity Fund is not just economic development. A lot of people don't realize that too. Um, if you've heard of Science Alliance and all the different things that Floor pours in, the uh, charities that, that the, the employees pay into out there uh, through their different, different charitable giving. That's all part of that structure. And there are literally millions and millions of dollars that come out of the fact that the floor is present in, in our community in a big way. So uh, kudos to you. Thank you for all that you do. And uh, I know that you guys are busy with 326. It looks like you got it down. Now it's time to remove it. Uh, but it's down, and that's, that's the key. And you guys are moving on to 333 apparently here before long, but there's a, there's a lot of a lot of action going on at the plant, and uh, the the majority of the employees and a lot of people don't know this, the majority of the employees at the plant are from Soda County, and we're proud of that. We're proud that we've been able to raise up sons and daughters to work there, and uh, in very technologically advanced jobs. And uh, uh, thank you for employing them. Thank you for being there. And uh, I couldn't think of a better time for Mr. Wilkins to come in. Thank you. Let's get a picture.
Come on, Rob, again. Come on, Rob, this is my motivator. Yeah, I'll take that in here in a second. Come on, Rob, Yeah, let's do Rob, the other side, so we have some symmetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come class us up over here, Robert. Yeah. Perfect. Great, everyone. One, two, three, one more. One, two, three. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have a couple more items before we catch up, gentlemen. <laughs> Questions, uh, welcome to stay or yeah, you're welcome to stay. We're almost done. <laughs> oh, awesome. Any questions, items on the agenda? That's just hard to do. It's hard to believe it's incredible. Off the agenda? Any questions in-house on the agenda? Seeing none. Questions off the agenda? Uh, Mark Craycraft. <clears throat> what plans are in place to provide shaded seating for those visiting the slash line? So there's, there's some shaded seating out there, and I know what Mark's getting at. I, I think probably as busy as it's been out there, it's it's getting a little harder to find. Um, what we're looking at, we'll, we'll see um, kind of what's available. We have other projects happening um, at ETC right now and uh, trying to be mindful of um, the team's time out there. Uh, it's, it's easy to kind of spread people too thin. So uh, it, it's a consideration, Mark. Um, you know, we, we don't want to have too much shade there too because you need to be out in the sun getting, especially in the splash pad, getting wet. But uh, And we also encourage people, you know, if you're going to come spend a day of it, bring a pop-up. You know, you can, you can bring it. Yeah. Um, you can bring uh, your own little tents and different things out there too. But um, how, how many shade structures are there? I know further away there's trees just down the hill. There are. I, I, I know there's two large umbrellas that we got. The side of foundation was very generous in getting a grant to purchase those. That was four years ago, probably the second year. I think we was open. We actually bought those, and then um, I noticed when I was there two weekends ago um, that there was probably a half a dozen other umbrellas um, that are provided by the splash pad. And then there was people there with gazebos and pop up. I don't know if that's the word for it or not, but that, that's what they brought. Oh, and uh, yeah, and uh, um, so yeah, we really encourage people to bring. But the other thing is we try not to uh, have too many because if you have too many structures it's hard to mow it's hard to maintain so it's, it's kind of a delicate balance so if there's been complaints uh, I think you know we'd be very interested in knowing what those are and if there's any recommendations I know we talked about maybe putting in a shelter house up there mm -hmm. up nearby uh, um, that's down the road it's just as you mentioned we have so many different projects going on right now um, we'll get there eventually it's just one of those things and we're glad they brought it to our attention Yes. And, and the uh, park manager, uh, Mr. Howard, um, and his crew, they, they construct um, picnic tables every winter during the yeah. off season and repair those that are needed. So it's a, it's a work in progress. Yes, Soda Foundation will give us a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe hint, <so>. hint. <laughs> so, if anybody's watching. Uh, any other questions off the agenda? Uh, Mark Craycraft, could you please? There's many insights, Audrey. Okay. Uh, could you please give us a progress report on the merger of CPS and the Department of Family Services? How many kids in care, temporary or permanent custody? Where are we sending kids for placement? How many are being reimbursed by the federal government under Title IV-E for boarding? Um, I can get you the, we'll get you the raw data on that, Mark. In, in terms of the high level, where are we at? Um, the financial uh, combine happens on July 2nd. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been working through that. Tammy's been doing a heck of a job. Um, really focusing on how do you combine the two operations. Um, you know, the financial piece of it is a big piece, especially when you know, budgets are aligning. So she's been working hand in hand with um, you know, JFS's um, financial folks. Um, I know they're in um, contract negotiation because we're also combining two unions. Um, those are going well. Um, so that is kind of in full swing as well. Um, kids in care is still high. I think we're right around 380. Um, so we haven't seen, I mean, it dips and it kind of ebbs and flows, but it's kind of staying in that 370, 380 range. 
Um, but in terms of all the Title IV-E and everything, Mark, we can get those numbers from you or, or, or Jason can provide them. Um, but it's it's a big lift. It, it's There's things we're fixing, um, getting all the people at the table, um, having really frank and open conversations. Um, it's, it's a, we have a crisis. And there, there's no doubt about it. We are dealing with a crisis by no one's fault other than the opioid epidemic. And that's really what we're dealing with. Um, we've said all along the combination, and it gives us the opportunity to move faster on some of these items. Um, it gives us an opportunity to combine um, two entities where they belong. Um, and that's really been the focus over this past couple months is doing the due diligence of that combination. Um, it's not just saying, hey, you guys now report over here. There's a lot of behind the scenes, just functional things, even just timekeeping and getting people in and out to be able to badge it. Like there, there's a, it's a big lift operationally, um, but it, it's coming along well. The, the team's adapting well. Um, like I said, Tammy and Jason's done a good job making sure the front line are comfortable. I think this, unless something's changed, um, according to the FTEs, this is the first time they're fully and I'm using the term fully based on how much has been allocated to them, fully staffed and since I can remember. Um, you know, the, from the attorney standpoint, there's three attorneys now with Mr. Huddleston retiring at the end of the year. We've, we have a, an attorney in place that's learning, so we'll have the two attorneys through the prosecutor's office. Um, so we're tackling it. Um, and we're kind of moving forward, but we, we can get to the raw data, Mark, but thank you for that question. Any additional thoughts there? Any other questions? One more question. All right, uh, Mark Raycraft, during times of extreme heat and cold, would you, would you encourage the townships to open their community buildings to allow relief for residents? I mean, ultimately it's township decision, of course. They'd have to figure out how to staff that. Um, it's an interesting thought, and, and, I, and I like it, quite honestly. Um, because that shelter would be more spread out across the county versus a cooling station and or warming station that we typically see show up at um, here in Portsmouth. You know, if something's a little more local to where people live, that makes sense. But once again, it, it's gonna fall in the townships to figure out how do you staff it, how do you, you know, there, there would be an inherent in, increase to cost um, in terms of heating, cooling, if you have people, how long they do it for, what's their parameters. Um, if they could figure it out, I think it's a good idea. Um, but ultimately, it's something that each township on their own would have to, to figure out. Okay. Any other comments, questions? We're good. Thank you for those questions. Um, Commissioner Davis, do you have anything to add? No, sir. No comments today? No. I, I just want to mention that uh, Tommy Zula this clinic is yeah. this weekend at the pump track yes. Saturday. I think it, I have the information here somewhere. Let me get, just give it to you real quick. World champion. World champion, Tommy Zula. World, yes, world Not champion. Not defending, he was in 2019. Mm -hmm. He's going for it again this year. It, it says that the first clinic is for intermediate advanced riders from eight to 10. Um, the second clinic is for beginners from 11 to 1. Cost is $25 a person. Helmets are required. We arrive 30 minutes early. That's very good. So, yeah. I hope everyone takes advantage of that. When, and if when, nothing else, just go down and watch him. Whew. Yeah. He's yeah, an amazing it's rider. <laughs> Any of you seen it? So oh our pump track, it, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, we put in a pump track, which if you're not familiar with what a pump track is, it's, it's a BMX type track um, and it's paved and it's got all kinds of turns and ramps and things like that. And the 2019 world champion, uh, which of course there was this law because of COVID, you know, and they didn't race again until last year, but um, he, he comes and visits often to practice here. And he was helpful, very helpful in the beginning yes. in getting this off the ground. And uh, he's doing a clinic here, which, I mean, this pump track stuff is big. I mean, it's getting big across the country, and it's international, it's huge. And I think last championship was in Lisbon, mm -hmm. Lisbon, and then this one is in Spain, Spain, somewhere, mm -hmm. I don't know. Not here. But we have a local woman that will be competing in 
She the, qualified. She yeah. qualified for world championships. And she is part of Samba, the Southern Ohio, the Southern Ohio Mountain Bike Association. And uh, she'll be competing. Christy Franklin. Christy. Yep. And Tommy so. is from Dayton. He, yeah. he yes. Is, uh, so yes, they the didn't have a pump track Ohio. until we built one. And I think they thought, look, we have one of the world champions. We probably ought to build one ourselves. Yeah. So they kind of got the idea from us. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, but, yeah, we were proud. We actually have... Um, we had at one time the only Red Bull uh, certified competition track in Ohio. For about three or four months. Yeah. <laughs> but we're the first. We're the first. We're go. the first. We will always be the first. There you go. So, so yeah, it's exciting. And, and to learn from the best, Kathy. I mean, uh, Kathy's going to go down. She's going to do it. Right? One of these days. <laughs> So. Any additional comments? Uh, oh. No, no, not at this time. Um, I'll, I'll add that the um, this clinic, I believe it's Christy has been instrumental in uh, organizing this, um, and Samba, who you know they're out, they're the ones that are cutting the mountain bike trails out in the forest. They've been excellent. Um, it's Tommy Zula and Eric, and I'm going to butcher his name. Um, Deal D I E H L will be there. Um, you know when we launched this, we had a banner at the track that said uh, something around the champions made here or champions something about future champions home of future champions i think is yeah. how we word it and that that's a real possibility um, there was a there was a lady that won the world championship i think last year in lisbon and the only other track she'd ever been on was the one in her own town um, so this has given uh, the kids something to do. We hear so often kids need something to do. Kids something to do, a skill to learn. And uh, on launch day, we had people from the age of three years old to 71 on the track. So it's for all ages. And uh, to see Tommy and Eric and, of course, Christy out there uh, teaching people how to, to really enjoy the track, uh, it's, it's a great opportunity. Uh, there's several other things happening in the community this, uh, this weekend. Final Friday um, is tomorrow. That's down at Three Bridges through the Bony Fiddle Project. Um, it is their Hippie Fest, I believe. So they always have a different theme every month. Um, and it's always free um, through the Final Friday. Uh, also, Critter Encounter is this weekend as well. That's second prize. Second prize, I believe. Yes? Nobody? Okay. I think that's right. Um, here in town, it's always free as well to go see... Uh, Sloths and snakes, and they have a petting zoo. And it was a good time last year. Um, and then we have a big announcement. It, it was announced last Friday by the governor's office, um, but uh, Scioto County and the Land Utilization Bank um, received the Brownfield grant that we've been talking about now for a while um, in the in the amount of. $4,738,996. Uh, this, um, I want to thank Robert Horton, Economic Development Director. Um, he put better part of four years of his life into figuring this out. And, and he had the due diligence and everything ready and whenever funding may or may not come because we didn't know. And it's a, it's a big project. Um, and then once the legislator and the governor announced um, last year that, hey, we have this brownfield money, one-time money, um, Robert was ready. And his hard work is paying off. Um, this is a huge opportunity to clean up, quite honestly, the dirtiest part of the land. Definitely in the region, if not the state. Um, it sits right beside our water filtration plant, 26 acres. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll finally have the funds to clean up a site that has been dormant now for decades um, and to make it safer. So, Robert, thank you so much yes. for your effort on this. I know getting the money is the hard part, but doing the project uh, adds a, <laughs> that's a different level of, of work, and we look forward to this one. Um, it'll open up that 26 acres to some sort of economic development. That's the plan. Um, and make it safer. So, thank you once again for your hard work on that. Um, also, Scotty. Yes. I don't want to leave you out. I, I have one I consider an ace in the hole. A gentleman that I'm very instrumental in guiding me. Yep. And that was Jim Lacoste. 
That's right. Jim Rakakis was one of the leading voices um, to get this funding through the legislature, and he is with, help me with the organization, Robert. Uh, what organizations, Jim, with? Western. Western yeah. Land yeah. Conservancy. Yeah. Western Land Conservancy. Um, so he, he's been instrumental in getting this money through the legislature, and our site was quite honestly the poster child for why the state should be coming up with this money statewide um, because when he walked on the site his shoes melted. Um, literally. Literally melted. It's not an exaggeration. So uh, thank you Jim, uh, or caucus as well. Um, this, this is a historic, I don't know if people realize the magnitude, but this is pretty historic to be able to clean up the site like that and to have the funds to do it. Um, had it just been the county, I don't know that we'd ever have the close to $6 million to clean up that site. Um, but thank you to our legislator, our State Representative Baldrick, Senator Johnson, of course Governor DeWine, uh, for moving this funding through. It's, it's, it's a huge project and it's a big win for the community. Um, and uh, and it, thanks to Robert. Honestly, thank you for your hard work on this. Because I know it was a lot. I, I know it was sweating the application and uh, there was a lot needed, but he was already ready with the due diligence. He was already ready with the bulk of the work. So um, thank you for that. Any additional comments? Anybody want to add comment to that? I would, I would like to add as far as the, the land bank itself and you know, the Side of County Land Reutilization Corporation as a separate entity uh, as far as how it's set up and everything else. And I wanted to thank the board for taking this project on. Uh, you know, the, as far as choosing to do it, because it is, I mean, it's a big project. And prior to that, of course, the land bank had done uh, residential houses, had torn down somewhere around 112 residential blighted properties throughout our community since 2017. Um, but then there was a lot of legal wrangling that had to go on in order to even be able to get it in the hands of the land bank to do this project. Um, that took a lot of work. It took a lot of legal work, um, and I want to give Justin Bloom some credit for that because he had to do a lot of work to get all the liens. This is the new Boston Coke site, um, and, and it had a lot of liens on it, a lot of tax liens, a lot of federal liens. It had, it had all kinds of liens on it, and it took a lot of work to get to that point. But, uh, you know, in, in preparation for this, we've done some gas stations. But now, this is a whole new realm. This is a lot bigger than, than anything that's ever been done by the land bank. So um, it's going to be interesting. Robert, uh, looking forward to the project, getting it off the ground, and getting that site cleaned up. If anybody is in, you know, wonders where that's at, it's right next to Walmart in New Boston, uh, right next to a lot of residential housing and stuff like that. It needs to be removed. And uh, we are going to clean that site up. And, and there is already pers prospective development um, that, that could come in there as a result of this. So um, it's going to benefit the city of Portsmouth greatly. It's going to benefit the city of Portsmouth quite a bit um, and, and their plans for their water plant. So we've been working together with them to communicate that and get that property uh, in the hands of the land bank and then of course that will go back to the city so they can once it's cleaned and remediated so they can do their project uh, so it's 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 a collaborative effort it really is on many fronts and everybody's worked very well together and uh, can't say enough about Jim McCaucus what that man has done for this state he's getting ready to go into retirement here soon and he wants to see this project done and we want to get it done not just for him, but more, mostly for the citizens of Soda County uh, to remove a, a very major uh, health and safety issue in our community. Thank you. If there's no additional comments, anything to add? Can I get a motion to adjourn? I will make the motion to adjourn. I'll say. 1018. Mm -hmm. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Powell. Hi. Have a great weekend. Get Thank out you, there everyone. Support the nonprofits that are working so hard. Check it out.